what we need from a state is neutrality towards religion and respect to it, but neutrality. Whereas now, uh, President Erdogan seems to be turning the tables upside down. Hello, and welcome to the Inside the Middle East question and answer series at the Middle East Initiative. My name is Joseph Ataman, and I'm a second year master's candidate at Harvard Center for Middle Eastern Studies and editor-in-chief of the Harvard Journal of Middle Eastern Politics and Policy. It's my pleasure to say that we're joined today by Dr. Mustafa Akyol, a Turkish writer, guest columnist for the New York Times, and senior fellow at Wellesley's Freedom Project. Thank you very much for joining us. It's a pleasure to be with you. Thank you for having me. Perhaps to start off, Turkey now seems more defined by its religion than ever before in the history of the, the near century long history of, of the Turkish Republic. What do you feel that means for Turkey? Well, this could have been something positive and something to hail if it meant equalization of you know, all citizens and all walks of life. What I mean is that since the beginning of the Turkish Republic, a very strict definition of secularism has been imposed. And uh, that, that didn't include, in my view, enough freedom of religion. One example was the headscarf ban. You couldn't wear a headscarf as a traditional, you know, conservative, pious Muslim lady and go to campus or get a public job. So there was some discrimination against the religious majority, which is in this case, pious, conservative, Sunni Muslims. There were also a lot of implications to negative implications on religious minorities as well. I mean, in Turkey, there it's still the law. You can't wear, dress up like a cleric, like a priest or and walk on the street. So it's a very strict secularism, which had serious issues. And... Uh, it's good that some of the excesses of that secularism have been pushed back. Now you can wear a headscarf and get a public job or become an MP, and that's good. But it didn't stop there. It also is now taking a form of, uh, instead of states suppressing religion, states sponsoring religion and promoting it, and promoting a religious conservative identity as the identity of the new ideal citizen. And that's where I, I have uh, concerns lately, uh, because I think uh, what we need from a state is neutrality towards religion and respect to it, but neutrality. Whereas now uh, President Erdogan seems to be turning the tables upside down. The formerly looked down upon you know, religious conservatives are now the new ideal citizens. And uh, I can't say you know, it's been directly imposed by law yet, but when you look at the language used by uh, the president and, and the new political culture that is unfolding, now it seems the, seculars, the secular Turks look like the outcasts, second-class citizens. And that is worrying in that sense. So how do you reconcile the need for religious freedom with the common trend now in Turkey for this kind of strong-arm politics? Basically, the issue is the size of the state. I mean, in Turkey, the state controls a lot of things. Every university is tied to a central body, which is tied to the president, which gives the president the right to appoint the presidents of universities, for example, which was in the past, at the, that institution was at the hand of more secularist Turks, so they were discouraging you know, religious practices in universities. Now it's the other way around. And when you have such a big leviathan, if you will, people try to capture it and use it to their advantage. And uh, interestingly, when uh, President Erdogan, his supporters, the ruling AKP, when they didn't have that whole state power, they were critical of it and they were sympathetic to arguments about liberalizing it. A smaller state looked like a good idea. Once they captured it, they liked the big state. And now they're actually expanding it more and more to state control over the academia, state control over media, state control over civil society is now growing. And that is worrying because in the past, uh, the secularists controlled it, but they were a minority in the society, so their control went to a certain level. Now there is the worry that it can actually become a very big state uh, and with an authoritarian, patriarchal, you know, uh, political culture and, and ruling elite and having the majority behind them. So that is, uh, that is a concern. You wrote recently in one of your columns that Turkey is now a dangerous place to be a public figure. How is it possible to perhaps return from that state and to bring back into a society where opposition and dissent are accepted and perhaps even praised? Well, if I knew the answer, I would get a Nobel Peace Prize or something. I don't think anybody has the answer. 
what is happening today in Turkey is that we are going through a kind of a sense of historical revolution. President Erdogan and his supporters believe that the real nation, you know, the core of the nation, it, it was pushed outside of power for a century, and now they are getting their country back, which is which sounds like democratization, but also which is actually discriminatory against the old elite, which are now the outcasts. And and in their mind, democracy means elections. So once you win the elections, you will have the right to control everything from the media to campuses. They don't have a notion of like autonomous institutions in a democracy. Rule of law is not very much praised. It's about the rule of the winner. Rule of the people, and that winner is defined as somebody who embodies the nation and its inclination, its will, you know, it's called. There's little understanding of democracy as a pluralist system where, you know, yes, the winner is ruled, but within certain rules and the minority and the opposition has a legitimate right. Uh, and there is a lot of conspiracy theory which is tying the opposition to conspiracies against Turkey. Therefore, if you are with President Erdogan, you are a patriot. If you're not with him, your patriotism is questioned. And you could be uh, a member of any, you know, cabal or any network that is against uh, the government. And, and I mean, th this has partly happened because Turkey really went through big problems lately. I mean, there was a military coup attempt. There was indeed a network within that coup attempt, if you ask me, a lot of observers. Uh, Turkey is under terrorist threats. So there are real issues that Turkey is facing. But instead of using those issues as a as a way to establish, uh, as, as a reason to have a broader and more embracing state, President Erdogan and his supporters seem to use this to consolidate their own power, uh, and, and which creates more divisions in, in society. So it is hard. I mean, I think uh, President Erdogan and his supporters think that once President Erdogan has more and more power, Turkey will ultimately become a wonderful place, you know, with with a real ideal democracy and so on and so forth. I think they have to live through this and see that a democracy is not just established by one faction of society. You have to be more embracive. How they will get that, I don't know. I think it's, it will be through some trial and error process. Mm -hmm.